Okay, let's call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. It's November 21st, 2019. Um, roll call. Ben Viola. Here. Luke Summers. Here. Judith Cavallaro. Present. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Paul Rodriguez. Here. And Joe Carroll said that he may be attending a little late, depending on traffic tonight. So. Election of officers, item number three. So I'd like to make a motion that uh, uh, Nick stay as chairman, uh, I stay as vice chairman, Jason will be the uh, treasurer, and Joe will be the clerk. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? None opposed. Okay. Now we are at item number four, public hearing. The purposes for our proposed changes to the sewer use regulations, including a change to the rate schedule. Uh, I, in preparation for this, as part of uh, the, uh, the procedure, I did mail out a notification to all our um, uh, users and uh, provided uh, information on our proposed rates and changes to our to our rate schedule um, I did get three three emails and um, I did four emails no three emails um, and I uh, you know, just for, for the record I want would like to take a moment yes, please to, please to, please to do you want to read them fully into the no, record just, or just uh, who they are? Who they are. And kind of summarize what they yes. were talking about. Um, the, and I, I did provide these emails to the trustees in, in their packet. And the first was uh, from Peggy, Peggy and Pat Foster. And are they here? No. So I, um, he was referencing the, the letter that he re received and he had an issue with regards to the district's um, rate structure uh, in that um, you know, there were only two in his home and his neighbors have uh, four or six or eight people in it and he thought that the rate structure um, was, was not equi equitable in that way and that it's not based off of flow. And I did provide, did respond to him and uh, uh, tell him explain to him the, uh, the justification the trustees have um, uh, have uh, used in order to develop the race the type of rate structure that they have and that um, basically uh, two-thirds of our, our costs are fixed so um, on a using round numbers here because our bills uh, currently $99 $70 of that is fixed and that's based on uh, provide uh, labor, staff, uh, benefits, insurance, uh, heating, uh, uh, our equipment maintenance, that type of stuff. And then a third of it is base, is uh, um, adjusted due to flow, uh, primarily the electrical cost for pumping and uh, the air used for treating of the waste. So that's really only a remaining um, $30, but and then on top of that, uh, in order to, to adjust our bills based off a of rate, uh, off a of flow, we would have to get um, the water data from uh, Portland Water Company, Portland Water District, and we have to purchase that data. And the cost of that data would, uh, is actually, uh, would cost us $10 per account. Uh, and so with the, 
bulk of it, the data costs us and the time and effort to manipulate it, uh, to adjust the, the rates. Uh, the trustees in the past decided that um, in order to keep the overall operational cost down, that a fixed rate structure per dwelling unit was how they wanted to, to move forward. So that was his concern, and that same concern had been reflected from um, Susan Hamill. Uh, she's from uh, three, <coughs> three Bay Street, and uh, she actually had a, a couple items that she um, had talked talk to me about, one being uh, that same same issue. Um, she also uh, asked about rate comparisons. She no she noted that the 16 local towns that I had compared our rates to, uh, six of them were uh, part of the Port and Water District. Uh, I explained to her that the uh, even though their their rates are um, published on the Port and Water District um, website, they are a system that is managed by the Portland Water District, but basically it's under contract by the town that each town is uniquely different in how they develop their rates and how they, what they establish as their rates and what Portland Water District does. Some towns, Portland Water District only provides treatment, sometimes they provide treatment and conveyance. Uh, let's see what else did she touch on. She asked about efficiency studies, whether we had done an efficiency study on the operations of the facility, and I explained to her that we, you know, uh, uh, do that in-house. Um, yeah, that's essentially it. So that was Mrs. Hamels. And the last was uh, Mr. Clark's, and uh, essentially he had the same um, concerns. Um, he lives in uh, condo and with regards to the amount of water use and how his rate sh shouldn't be the same as somebody in a, in a much larger home. Um, so, and I also responded to him via email and we have all those documents. And I also received just one other phone call, um, similar, similar issues or concerns that she had. Yeah. All right, so because this is a public hearing, we're opening it up for the public and the way it's going to work is if you want to speak, please step up, pull the microphone, you can pull it back to your chair, identify yourself. Can you hear me now? Okay, in any case, I'm Larry Hartwell. I live at 5 Colby Drive down at Dunstan Crossing. Um, I believe there was one other point that uh, Mrs. Hamill had was in regards to seasonal units and her thought of many seasonal units not being um, billed separately that over the years, the decades that, you know, they've had one, one hookup and then they have added units, auxiliary units, and was wondering about, you know, us having those all connected too, and certainly these are, you know, not one-time costs. Uh, we certainly have a fixed cost to to hook up a unit, but then it's good for for decades. So I just wondered if this, what the thoughts yeah. are on that. And the other one is, uh, as far as uh, the billing is concerned, using uh, Portland Water District just simply to, to send out the bills. I, I, are you talking about the the cost of ten dollars per? No, that's just to get the water data. Yeah. Uh, for them to provide us the data that of how much water the uh, each property uses, it's ten dollars per account per yeah. quarter. Per quarter. Yeah. And that, that doesn't include them shipping out the bills, and yeah. processing the bills oh. for us. And just to add to the complexity, we in Scarborough don't all get our water from Portland Water District. So if we were to get water readings, we would have to buy them not only from Portland Water, but from Maine Water on the Saco and Old Orchard Beach line end, and then we would have to go in and have private meters installed to all those folks on wells. 
and keep track of all that administration. Okay, yeah, that makes no sense yeah. no. to do that. And the, the other complication on uh, with regards to water is watering and washing cars. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people now these days have uh, irrigation systems mm -hmm. and all that would be measured in your water meter bill and you would start getting billed on the sewer side for any wa water, water that, that was we used didn't that did, we don't see. Um, with regard to the seasonal um, units, um, we work with the town uh, in that regard. Um, and if a, typically what actually ends up happening is the town finds out from about a, 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 an illegal accessory unit um, <laughs> through uh, neighbors typically. And uh, the, they, they will evaluate it. And if it gets deemed a, a, um, a, uh, an, ex an accessory dwelling unit, which is how we base our billing on, it has to be a, an accessory dwelling unit, which is basically uh, any standalone apartment that can function. So if it has a bedroom, a bath, and a kitchen, it ended up to be a, a, a dwelling unit. And uh, we would adjust our billing accordingly. Um, a lot of these units are actually identified in the sale of property um, these days as the, uh, the, um, the real estate um, financing, I think it is primarily, are doing a pretty good job on the researching of property with regards to uh, permits and mm -hmm. it is actually quite frequently that one of these units are identified and we adjust the, that bill accordingly. So, so they're getting captured. You know, we, we haven't done we haven't done a physical audit ourselves, mm -hmm. but you know, we work with the town. If we think that we have identified one, we we let the town know. And as soon as they change their classification to um, an accessory dwelling <coughs> unit, we will cha we change our bill because our bill is based on their classification. On their classification. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Well, thank you for the information. Yep. You're welcome. Or do you want to pass the mic? You can probably just sit in this chair. And yeah. and tell uh, it's up to no, you. I think it's the, the camera. The camera picks If you could it. stand right where he was. Oh, okay. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. Hi. So Hi. Karen Shoup, 193 Pine Point Road. Um, this is not my first time speaking before you. There are some new members. I also serve as the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and so uh, I think this would be a good time to sort of address sort of a pattern that I've seen go on with the sanitary district. I've only been on the sanitary district and I've lived on Pine Point Road for the last five years. The last time I was before you guys was when Ready Seafood was polluting and contaminating our whole neighborhood where the whole neighborhood, as you know, was smelling very badly. Um, you know, first I think basically my think what my issue kind of boils down to and some of the questions, my understanding is I could ask some questions tonight um, was kind of the fee structure and also the fine structure. In the conversations I had with Mr. Hughes a couple of years ago, my understanding is there are habitual people who are continually polluting and sometimes they have to go out and sometimes fix whatever that issue is. And I think first my question is, is the fine structure going to increase as well as our rates? The, the rate structure is uh, universal right through it. Everything's changing the same amount. So when people are fined, is it if, is the first fine the same as the third fine, or is it just we, flat we don't across? We do have a, a fine structure in that way, no. And so so if someone is continually polluting, what is the repercussion? Let's, well, when you say polluting, let's, uh, they're, not, they're not polluting the sewer. They're discharging into the sewer, and, and you're, you're, um, um, which, you know, when they discharge into the sewer, we measure the strength of their wastewater, mm -hmm. and we base this, their bill on uh, high strength waste. And there's a formula that, um, as we get the data, we'll, we will get the data. If they don't provide it, we'll collect it ourselves, and we'll adjust their bill based on that, the data that we collect. So, if, op if so, for example, if a restaurant is operating and they don't have a grease trap and you find out that doing that they do not get fined we do not have a universal policy that all restaurants have to have a grease trap it's uh, we are not a, um, a community that requires that at this point in time as we move forward and new restaurants come on board uh, we do require them to install rest uh, grease traps 
as new restaurants uh, or as existing restaurants expand and um, you know, are requesting additional seating capacity, which is the equivalent and more flow, we require them to uh, make modifications to include food scraps. But not all existing restaurants are required to, to uh, have a grease scrap at this point in time. Right, so I mean, you guys are looking for more capital, and I think kind of the concern I see is like, it seems more pro-business where you guys are willing to kind of sit back and relax and kind of let them continue to pollute. And I mean, my understanding, I can't imagine that grease would be good for your system. Well, grease is not good for our system, so we appreciate all you folks not sending it to us. We really do. Um, as for the high strength waste multiplier, we have charged, I think, a, a couple of different situations, 1.7 times a normal fee. That's not a fine, that's just a high strength waste cost. So they're paying for it. And all new restaurants have to have a grease trap. They're paying for that too. So I mean, I have to circle back because my understanding was back in 2013, the clam bake, as you know, is operating without a grease trap. I mean, they have a long standing business. They know you need a grease trap. And I feel like you guys kind of, I, I, I want to understand why they weren't fined or why businesses can pollute our whole neighborhood for over a year and not sort of be fined for that. I mean, we had to call the DEP to come in and fix the problem when I feel like maybe you sort of knew that was going on. And I'm wondering if there's other ways for you guys to capture revenue. Um, well, um, the Pine Point restaurant you mentioned mm -hmm. learned a very expensive lesson because they didn't have a grease trap. They had a clog on a Friday night that backed up into the restaurant in the middle of summer. So they paid for that one, and then they put one in. So uh, we're not allowing people to pollute. We are allowing people to discharge to our system where we remove the waste and discharge it, clean with effluent to the ocean. Um, the thing that we don't have the authority to do is go into an existing establishment and make them do something that they hadn't done yet. That's not in our charter. We don't have the power of fines in our char charter. What we do, what we're able to do is charge a user fee and we can charge that to commercial customers based on flow and strength of waste. Those are the tools in our toolbox and those essentially summarize what we can do. Right, interesting, okay. And so I'm just trying to understand, so when we were having that issue and we found that there was a polluter and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what sort of inspections and sort of things you guys do to prevent, because you say you have aging infrastructure and I would imagine that the fact that a huge restaurant that was operating for two years dumping grease would also damage the infrastructure of what, was, what it was going through. And so you have them doing this, they have no fine and now we have to replace it. So they also pay a user fee. That's so the user pay. fee allows them to dump what they want in there. No. Okay. Um, the, the user fee, they have a rate. We have a we have our rate structure, and um, you know the, the restaurants do pay a, 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 an awful lot of money. Uh -huh. um, and using um, using uh, the clam bake as an example, since mm -hmm. you brought it up. Um, <coughs> They're a seasonal restaurant, and uh, they're, you're, the uh, commercial bills are actually based, uh, they have two components to it, um, one being uh, their um, peak use, peak quarter use, mm -hmm. and then the, the, of, the, of the previous year, and the other piece being based on their current water use for that quarter. That peak use actually um, is fixed for the for the four quarters of the, the next year. So in the during the winter, when the the clam bake is not even uh, operating, they're still paying quite a significant sewer bill based on their high flows during the summer months. So th they they do pay a significant sewer bill. So when you give them, I mean, I have to use them as an example because that's yeah. really the biggest example of I can use is when you write them a letter and say you need to do this immediately, there's nothing, 
there's no fine. There's nothing making them do this immediately. No, I, I don't have fine capability. We don't. We don't have the, the ability. Town, the town, the, you know, and, and you, you use the word polluting. Um, polluting. Well, I guess damaging your infrastructure in your yes. system, because I would imagine these sort of things mm -hmm. would be would age them faster when you have things being put into them that shouldn't be. Um, no, you know, I, I don't have. I don't have the ability to, to, to find them or shut them down. That you know, falls under the town's. But if, 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 if a place has an occupancy permit, I need to convey that wastewater and treat it. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. That's, a, that's, that's the health and safety issue with regard to um, mm. you know, making sure any of this waste doesn't get into the marsh, which it has not been getting into right. the marsh. Uh, that's why you know, I'm very particular on using the word polluting. They are not polluting. They are discharging into the sewer. Uh, polluting would be discharging into the marsh or having an un unauthorized discharge into the marsh and, and you know, neither ready seafood nor the clam bake had that. Okay, I guess discharging stuff that should not be discharged. Yes. And so I think I'm kind of curious as to the board's authority to explore those options. I mean, this is stretching again, Mr. Hughes, but I do remember conversations with you about just a residential property and you saying we're out there all the time. I don't know what they're doing. Why can't you say, I've been out here 60 times, we're going to start finding you? And I look to the trustees because, I mean, you guys somewhat, this is what your board is. And I, I mean, I get, you have to raise your rates and you need to make money, but I'm also like, let's sort of make people a little more accountable. I mean, you had a whole neighborhood that was smelling. We immediately called the DEP and they identified. And I, I'm also like, do you not know what is going on in your system? I mean, this was going on for a very long time in our neighborhood. You had a whole neighborhood here. A woman was getting headaches and all this stuff. And it's kind of like, why can't we capture these people who are using your system inaccurately, improperly aging it, and now you have maybe pipes on Pine Point that are now maybe more aged than more because you have a very large business dumping their grease into them. And so I think my question tonight is, you know, let's pass the rate on to the residents. And, you know, I mean, I, I pulled the article from the newspaper. And, I mean, it's like it feels like you guys are baby stepping around some of these businesses and maybe not really making them accountable. I mean, what, what restaurant doesn't know you can't dump grease down a drain? They clearly know what they're supposed to be doing and what they're not supposed to be doing. And I think maybe you should take a harder line on them and make them accountable. And, you know, I think it's really unfortunate that, you know, you have to pass this on to the residents because as you're quoted in the newspaper saying, Mr. Greenleaf and Mr. Hughes both saying the last thing we want to do is turn around and push this on the residents. So now, six, seven years later, you're saying the infrastructure is aging. Well, is it aging because we have no way of punishing these people who are continually dumping into our system? I mean, what happened with Brady Seafood was really bad. And I know the DEP came down on them really hard. And I think it was unfortunate that you guys didn't have any sort of way to deal with that situation either. Um, well, the seafood processing plant notwithstanding, we're here to hear your voice as the public. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, these rates aren't just going up on you. These rates are going up on them too. Absolutely. So they are paying for the aging in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And without going into boring detail, we were started as a system back in the 60s. Uh, I think we were incorporated in the early 70s. We built a plant at um, the Eastern Trail that just did primary treatment on the edge of the marsh. And in 1984, we built the plant that we're currently running now. And then we upgraded it 20 years later. And each time we did something like that, or we built that new pump station on, on Old County Road, that cost money. And there are pump stations out there that are original from the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And there are pumps that aren't designed for 40 year life. So that's what we're talking about, aging infrastructure. Pumps, blowers, pipes. You know, pipes last 50 to 100 years, mm -hmm. um, however, there is a pipe in our system that likes to break every couple months. Right. And we don't like that. And we need to replace a good portion of it. So we can't replace all those 
assets with the rates as they currently are, which is why we're doing this. So when they when you when you do have a clog or whatever you would call it, and you have to go out and sort of deal with the situation, there's actually no the you guys have no authority to say you're you know you're violating. You don't have any rules. We yeah. have pre-treatment. Uh, we have the authority to, with a pre-treatment program, to um, require companies that have high strength waste to do something about it. Yes. And so when they don't follow that, though, you don't have the authority to say you're in violation and you need to pay a fine. We do not have that kind of structure right now. No. Is that, and do that any other sort of sanitary districts in the state fine people no, who are we, we doing those sort of things? No, we don't have a sewer police, unfortunately. No. Yeah. We don't. Right. Well, I appreciate you guys listening to me tonight. I think, as you as you guys know, what happened on Pine Point Road was not really pretty, and it was very it smelled really bad for a very long time. I, I was very discouraged that it took us kind of calling the DEP to kind of come in and identify these issues. And again, I feel like maybe it's, I don't see why we can't sort of punish habitual people who are continually, clearly not using the system the way that it's designed to be. And um, Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Anyone else from the public? <laughs> um, with that, if there are no other questions, comments, uh, I'm looking for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All right. Um, next item on the agenda. We had a meeting on October 24th, 2019. Um, we have minutes from that that need to be approved. Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 24th. Second. Any corrections, discussion, omissions, deletions, additions? Go ahead, Ben. Um, it was quite a long meeting, but on page nine, wow, top of the, I guess the beginning of the second paragraph, uh, Mr. Greenleaf, agrees that notification should go out to all engineering firms, notifying them, and then that's something that missed left out there. Where are we on page nine again? Uh, the second paragraph. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I Firms notifying them throughout the whole name. Notifying them, period. Is it period? Is it period, or what are you notifying them of? The, about the stamp about drawings the stamp. referenced above okay. the yep. previous paragraph. Correct. So we just need a period. Just then. need a period there. Period. Thank you. Any more? All in favor? None opposed? Okay. Superintendent's report. All right. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of October is included in your packet. Our average flow was 1.18 million gallons a day. We did have a total suspended solid permit violation on the Monday after the storm. This is the same violation I, that I verbally notified you at the last trustees meeting. Um, not a new violation. Uh, the actual cause of the violation is not known, but our process quickly returned to normal operations thereafter, even with the daily and weekly TSS violation, our effluent quality met all of the permitted uh, requirements. And we averaged for the month still 92% uh, um, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 94% TSS, or total suspended solids removal, uh, for uh, average effluent concentrations of 20 and 19, respectively. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of October is included in your packet. There are, were several anomalies. 
uh, with the causes noted. And as noted, most of the causes were due to the windstorm we had the week of the 16th. Um, on Black Point Road, uh, pump station number eight, uh, which is the small pump station beyond the treatment plant uh, that services Prout Snack. Uh, as, as I notified you at the last trustees meeting, the generator at pump station eight failed during the windstorm. And as previously discussed, the district was able to utilize the town's portable generator at this location um, during the storm. And we actually con are continuing to do so for the near term uh, because unfortunately the generator cannot be fixed due to the parts no longer being uh, available. Um, so uh, we actually have received two quotes uh, for a new generator um, and uh, we have placed it on order and Hopefully we will we'll get it uh, shorter than 10 weeks, but um, once we get it here, Carol and uh, Paul will get it installed and, and what have you. It's going to, the quote that we got, I believe, was um, $17,000 or uh, in, in something for a 20 kW generator. Um, control panels one, two, and three replacement project that's uh, in the budget for next year uh, at the treatment plant. It's the um, electronics uh, within the, the, these control panels, uh, they're the, the brain of the operation system. And a contract was on site to evaluate the existing panels and develop a quote for the replacement that uh, we can carry in our budget. I met with Hoyle Tanner Associates and have completed the inventory phase of this project. Uh, oh, they have complete, completed the inventory phase of this project and so now they're developing um, the, asset the asset management pro project, I'm sorry. And with regard to the sludge dewatering study, we have met and we are still meeting with some uh, vendors to look at some of the new technologies and some of the old technologies uh, to determine what's going to best fit for the district. And finally, uh, the district had a, one of our checks stolen and altered. Originally, the check had been made out to Admiral Fire and Safety here in town and placed in the mail. Uh, the altered check had uh, both the payee and the amount altered, um, and uh, we have filed the police report and uh, been working with KeyBank on this matter. And in the meantime, uh, we've uh, actually have switched the what's called the positive pay, which is a program to help prevent such uh, further events. Um, Verizon Wireless has had several contractors on site and preparing to go out to bid on the construction of the new cell tower at the, at the plant. And just a reminder, our regular monthly meeting for next month will be held on the 19th of December, not the um, fourth Thursday, which I believe might be Christmas. So that's what I have. Cool. Any questions for the superintendent? Comments? Correspondence. Uh, the only correspondence we have is the incident report that I filled out uh, for the effluent violation that I just mentioned. And as discussed, the effluent quality has returned uh, to the expected quality. It's uh, actually plants running quite good right now. Right. Old business, we have none. none. New business. Uh, proposed rate increase. Attached is a copy of the proposed modifications to the sewer regulations, Article um, 12, Schedule of Rates, as required by state law under 38 MRSA, Section 1202, rate page were notified of the public hearing by mail. A copy of the letter is attached. In addition, on October 20th, an advertisement for the public hearing with uh, the proposed changes was published in the main Sunday telegram. I recommend approval of the changes as outlined in the attached letter. Do you want to go over these at all? We can. Uh, before we do, I need to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Now we can. summarize the letter that I sent out in that it um, 
identified the fact that they were going through this process and uh, provide a history of our rates going back from 1973 to 2013, 2013, which was when our last rate increase was, which brought it up to $99 uh, per quarter uh, for a single residential user. Uh, the po proposed rate increase is uh, phased, uh, and it's uh, based on every year going up approximately 2%, um, or on average about uh, $2 a year, a quarter rather. Um, and so next in 2020, the, uh, the, this letter uh, will, uh, is, is to propose a new rate of $101 per quarter for a residential user. As mentioned earlier in the public hearing, all rates are actually increasing and they're actually, uh, they are summarized in the schedule of rates where um, the, uh, both the resident, the first item on the schedule is residential, but it also talks about commercial and industrial and uh, commercial and institutional and also industrial, which regard is the, uh, the increase to the high strength waste charges. Um, and it also uh, uh, identifies hauled waste. And I must apologize, I did have uh, two phone calls with regards to hauled waste primarily asking what is that, and it's septage, primarily, septage tanks. Um, so uh, the schedule goes all the way out to 10 years to uh, 2029, uh, where the final rate per quarter would um, be $120 per quarter uh, per residential user, and then again, it's a similar type Increases are across the board with regards to all the, the various uh, users of the system. Okay. Any questions for the superintendent? No questions. Maybe just a comment, uh, just so the public is aware that uh, you know it has been quite some time since the last rate increase. We certainly take these matters seriously. We know the impact on uh, you know the residents of the town, the commercial users as well. Uh, I think as a board, uh, we did a good job at reviewing and looking at our projections for operating costs. I think, uh, you know, uh, after receiving some public comment, uh, we did reach out to the public and ask what they preferred, whether a one-time increase over a period of years or a small uh, set of increases over a period of time would be better. Overwhelmingly, the feedback that we received was that this type of increase structure uh, was preferred. So just wanted to note that, and thanks to the board and Dave for all the hard work in putting this together and making sure that uh, we're financially sound going into the future. Thank you, Chair. Any more comments, questions? I have just a ben? question on the, uh, the effect, it'll be effective January 1st, so we'll get our first quarter, will be the first in March, I guess? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And or it's actually- right here, March 31st. Comments, questions? All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. All right. New business B, Fieldway Sewer Extension. On, on behalf of Philip Von Stata, uh, Northeast Civil Solutions has requested the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees approve approval of the proposed private sewer extension on Field Way. The proposed extension includes the following. Sewer service to seven homes, 740 feet of eight inch gravity sewer, 175 feet of two inch force main, seven manholes, and the system would be privately owned and maintained. This project will discharge into the public sewer located on Whittier Lane. And just uh, for trustees uh, clarification, the next par is next sentence was is inaccurate in the, in the notes. Uh, this system will not become district property. It will be privately owned and maintained. Um, the approved flow, uh, I, I recommend approval with the following conditions. The approved flow for, is for uh, typical sanitary waste from seven res residential dwelling units and the district's minimum flow per dwelling unit is 200 gallons per day. Uh, the total wastewater flow approved uh, for this extension is um, 
is 1,400 gallons per day, any flows in excess of the approved amounts and characteristics is subject to additional approvals. The project is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is 1646 per gallon, and that's uh, October 2019 rate, and is adjusted monthly based on engineering news records, construction cost index. Based on this rate, the total capacity reserve fee due is $23,044. Any additional homes, apartments, dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of this are subject to additional approval for wind fees. All sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade directly above the pipe and trace wire installed adjacent to the sewer services. A uh, CCTV inspection of the installed sewer is required at the completion of the project. Uh, to provide us with a copy of the homeowner association or similar documentation that defines ownership and maintenance requirements of the system. Uh, provide final plans um, to the district. Uh, sewer extension permit would be required and sewer permits for each house would be required. And finally, record plans in accordance with district standards. I would also like to add one other item uh, to my recommendations and that is a, um, a one year uh, to construct, uh, to begin construction on this uh, uh, project um, and if it is not, the approval will be um, sunset and go, and, and go away. I recommend approval based on the superintendent's conditions. Second. Okay, any questions for the superintendent? Ben. I'm looking at the uh, application for sewer extension permit, and I thought at one time we were requiring the applicant to actually sign that. In this case, it, the agent signed it, but we're really not even sure who that signature. Looking at the signature, I'm not sure yeah, who at, that would be. At, at, at this point where the project isn't even approved, you know, I would make them fill out a new application. In that case, it would have to be uh, the president of the homeowner association or whatever it is that they put together uh, legally to develop this project. Uh, they have to they have to get basically the seven homes together, uh, uh, um, and uh, come together with regards to um, who's, how they're going to pay for this. I actually, um, have a, I, 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 I question whether this is actually going to move forward. But uh, yeah, I, I did see that. I think it was it. I don't have it in front of me right now. I believe Mr. Strada signed it. No, uh, Travis Littell from uh, Northeast Civil Solutions. Yeah, we would not. <coughs> yeah, we would not accept that as an application. Notice I did not sign that. That's not filled out. Okay, I just want to make sure that. I did have another question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Um, on the plans, we're going to get plans, plan and profiles, or we will get plans and profiles because what they have here is not a plan and profile. It's just the plan. Yeah. Well, it's just they have a profile, but it's on a different sheet that um, it doesn't match up. So. And plan and profile should be on the same sheet, correct? No, they can they can be on different sheets, but I mean, it, commonly you see them on one sheet. I know of that requires it to be on the same sheet. I had a hard time following what they're proposing. <coughs> okay. Um, Jason. Uh, just another question with regards to your condition, Dave, on mm -hmm. uh, one year of construction. Uh, I assume you're taking into account that there is a moratorium, moratorium on construction at Proud Snack? One year to start construction. One year to start construction. I'm sorry. I, I, the, the verbiage that I used. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And at, that one, at the end of that one year, and if they don't move forward, and they want to come. They want to do it later. They have to come back to us. Yeah. Correct. All right. Works for me. Any more questions, comments, uh, yeah, Superintendent? Yeah. All in favor? All right, CMP 
Pump station, Brockton Road pump station. CMP approached the district a while back uh, with regards to combining access to the proposed substation on Broad Turn Road with the district's uh, pump station. Uh, the easement has been reviewed by our legal counsel and insurance agent, and I've reviewed the, uh, um, the layout, and I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute this, this uh, easement. Move yeah. approval. Uh, any questions, comments? Ben? I have a quick question. Um, I'm looking at the uh, indenture, and I'm not understanding. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't understand the yeah. language. But in the second paragraph, under witness, witness, yeah. grant, <coughs> grantor shall hereby grant unto grantee without covenant. What does that mean? Do you know what I, <laughs> I, you know, I let the legal eagles you know, argue it out, you know, some of the stuff I don't really understand and I'm not pretending to be a lawyer, so. Yeah. Um, you know, our legal attorney did review it. Uh, I know he had many comments. Um, a lot of, there was a lot of writing going back and forth. And uh, the final version, which is the version you have in your hand, is the one he approved. So our counsel approved? Our counsel approved the language And I also had our insurance agent review the insurance requirements, and um, there was no issues with that. Okay. Any more questions for the superintendent? All in favor? None opposed. All right, next line item is D, 98 Sawyer Road subdivision. On behalf of Mark O'Leary, Ransom Consulting, Inc. is requesting district approval to construct a pressure sewer system for a proposed 93 dwelling, for 93 dwelling units, uh, 57 single family homes and 18 duplexes. Uh, the subdivision is to be located at 98 Sawyer Road. Uh, the request includes the district accept the pressure sewer within the public right away uh, once the project is complete. Uh, the proposed development is as follows, 93 homes, single family, uh, 93 uh, dwelling units, uh, some of them are duplexes, 755 feet of four inch pressure sewer, 575 feet of three inch, uh, 2,130 feet of um, two inch, and 289 feet of inch and a half, and uh, connecting to the existing four inch force main and Sawyer Road at Route 114. All the proposed sewer within the public right of way shall be transferred over to the district and upon completion of the project, um, and then the, the uh, we're looking for three-phased implementation of the development. So, uh, and uh, fees to be paid uh, based on, on the phasing. Uh, previously, the board approved the installation of a 400 uh, feet of force main from the district's gravity manhole uh, in 114 uh, to Sawyer Road, and this was, uh, to facilitate getting out of uh, Route 114 uh, in advance of the um, uh, the work that was being done in there over the summer, um, and that work has been completed, and that that force main is all all ready to be tied into. I recommend approval with the following conditions: the approved flow is for 93 residential dwelling units at the 200 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. And uh, for a total allocation of 18,600 gallons per day, and any flows in excess of the approved amounts are characteristics that are subject to additional approvals. The capacity reserve fee for each phase shall be based on the number of dwelling units for that phase and the 200 gallon per day per dwelling unit. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is 1646 and again, it's adjusted monthly based on the ENR and based on the current ENR capacity reserve fee for this project would be total would be three hundred six thousand one hundred fifty six dollars. Uh, the project could be phased in the requested three phases. Permits and fees shall be executed by phase. Uh, the pressure sewer pipe shall be green or with a green stripe. Uh, 
alignment, uh, the pressure sewer elevation shall be realigned to provide with a continuous slope without interruption at culvert crossings. Adjustments shall be made on the final plan, um, which I actually have uh, just provided me. Um, the final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permit. Uh, the pressure sewer design analysis shall be updated based on the, the final design. Um, updated analysis shall be submitted to the district prior to issuance of any of the sewer permits. Uh, sewer extension permit is required for each phase. A complete application and associated fees shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. Sewer permit is required for each sewer service. A complete application and associated fees shall be required. So it shall be submitted to the district for, for each uh, permit as it is being built. Um, all sewer piping shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire in accordance with district standards. And finally, record plans shall be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Uh, one thing I want to add to the discussion, because it was discussed uh, during the, uh, the initial 400 feet of force main that was installed, was uh, whether or not sewer services should be provided to the homes along Sawyer Road leading up to the project. <coughs> um, they are proposing not to provide those sewer services, and um, I, I think that actually I, I agree with that approach. Um, 10 or 15 years ago when Pond View uh, Road was uh, serviced, the sewer, uh, the district did require the um, sewer service stubs be dropped at each uh, house lot. And in that time, uh, we have had not one house connect to any of those sewer services. And um, what concerns me is the um, when somebody does finally connect to one of those sewer services is it's going to be completely plugged and they have to be dug up anyway and or it could be it, it could be a point in the sewer, the force main that may may fail and leak uh, so uh, I think <coughs> what, moving forward the the uh, developers should probably um, we should notify the homeowners that this project is going on, and if they would like to connect to the sewer service, they can make arrangements with the, the developer. Discussion? No. no. You want to approve 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 approval yet? I move approval with the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Uh, second. Now discussion. Okay. Then. So. <coughs> On that last point that Dave made, are they do they have the right to tie in, or they're going to have to? You, you mentioned they're going to have to negotiate with the. They have the right to tie in. Uh, be, uh, when, once we become owner of that force main, um, we can allow whoever to tie into that force main. They they most definitely have the right to tie in. It's regarded if they want want to tie in or not. The the um, they can negotiate with. Developer to tie in. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, on the plans themselves, I had a question about the whenever they cross a um, storm drain, the force main dips down under the there's a little dipsy doodle. Yeah, I, I've never seen that before. I, well, that, that's the alignment comment that I have in my, my, my recommendations of approval that they realign the force main to get constantly rid of up, those. Constantly constantly down. Yeah. Okay. For consistent slope. Uh, so I learned that term in engineering school. Dipsy okay, dipsy doodle. Very, very professional. Uh, the other thing is, you know, last month we, we made a requirement that they have a, a PE stamp. They have PE stamps, but they're not really, they don't meet the requirements. Uh, th these are not dated. Oh. Are there new plans you have for me dated? I can go to them right now. <laughs> there you go. He is the signer of oh, the I stamp. Know. I, I thought I heard he's retired, though. Did you hear that? <laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah, for so a GE stamp, you have to put the date right on the stamp. It's required to have the date of the plan doesn't count. The plan doesn't count. And what they can do with that date is check to see the last revision and make sure it was it's the engineers good. looked at it based on the last revision. Without that, Smart. there's no way to tell. Good to know. Good to know. They will be. <laughs> You're gonna do mine too? Or? No, he has a revision. If you want him to, I'm sure he would. Right, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, any more questions for the superintendent? I, I was just curious about the alignment condition, Dave. Um, so, is the sewer moving down, or are other things moving up to uh, get rid of the? I, I, I <coughs> excuse me. I was looking at the alignment, and it looks like it's actually a fairly simple um, adjustment to move the sewer down a little bit to get get under the culverts as required in all the, all the locations. It, it's going to cause the, the um, sewer to get a little deeper in some spots, but then very soon, to the grade, they'll be back up to the five-foot culvert. Thanks. Can I just say one thing? So <clears throat> you see that a lot with the uh, water lines. They'll, they'll do that. Mm -hmm. But they've got clean water in those lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. These lines. They don't? <laughs> no. Uh, so it's misinformed. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know if that's why they were doing it, because they could do it based on the uh, water lines. They can do that. I had already addressed that with Dave. Thank okay. you. Um, I did have a question about future service tax. If this is a four inch horse man and you don't want to put the stubs out to the property lines, which I can understand because they'll just get filled up. Um, is there a way to provide a similar thing to a corporation on that horse main and turn it off so that the connection is easily made for a future service? We have the same. I, I have the same concerns that 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 uh, curb cop. Yes, is that it, what it's called? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it has the potential of failure uh, in the ground, and their <coughs> desire. Um, this is irrelevant in, in my in my my decision, but um, they were going to do a, um, a directional four pole push, whatever it's called, mm -hmm. from from the development <coughs> entrance all the way up to the. Where they tie in, um, so if they were going to do that, they would have to excavate at each uh, location. Okay. But again, that really ha is re it has no um, no uh, weighing on my decision, my recommendation not to provide them because my, my main concern is the a failure of unused infrastructure. Right. Um, and you know, historically on plans, you know, shows me. Know, nobody rushes to connect if they don't have to, if they have a functioning oh. system. That being said, I think it, it, it would uh, behoove us and the uh, developer to reach out to all the homeowners that are passing by to, to uh, let them know they have the ability to connect and if they would like. But technically, if that curb, curb cock or mm -hmm. corporation, whatever it's called, if it's not there, is there's still the technical way to connect to that force Yeah, we will like that. Okay. All right. That works for me. Okay. And we, we, you know, in our contacting to the homeowners is, you know, you know, it's not, they have to, if they want to connect, they have to do it today. They have the option forevermore right. to connect. So if they want to run out their uh, the life of their septic system, they, have, they would have that ability. Cool. One, once their septic system failed, that being said, um, the to town connect. the town will require them to connect. Okay. Good. Any more questions? All in favor? Not opposed. Phase eight, Eastern Village. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you.
Um, Valentine, you're, gonna, you're all done? Valentine Development LLC requested district approval to connect the discharge into the sewer, the wastewater from Lot 140 of the Eastern Village subdivision. Lot 140 was part of the amended subdivision plan, but was inadvertently left off the original Phase 8 request for approval. Uh, the district original approved Phase 8 on September 26, 2019. Uh, the proposed sewer work associated with Lot 4 basically includes just that one sewer service for that one single family home, and I recommend approval for it. Um, the approved wastewater flow is based on the district standard 200 gallons per day, um, and no additional flow. Capacity reserve fee is based on that, and 1646 per gallon, and is adjusted monthly, so capacity reserve fee of 3,296 gallons. Um, Detectable under, uh, underground utility marking and trace, tracer wire on the sewer service. Um, and uh, a sewer permit is required for, for this project. Uh, motion, motion we approve based on the conditions set forth by the superintendent. Second. Any questions? Comments? Barring none, all in favor? None opposed. All right. F, budget ten, summary. Ten month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Move approval. Second. Any questions, comments for the superintendent? I have yes, some comments. So the uh, increase in the chemicals was just due to the nitrification? Yeah, the, nit the, the process in the plant uh, nitrifying on us over the summer, uh, late summer and now um, has resulted in uh, the need to utilize all those chemicals as we discussed in the, in the workshop. Um, and uh, we hadn't budgeted or planned for it the last couple, three years. You know, uh, we've been able to stay out of nitrification just Live things do what they want to do sometimes. Cool. Kind of like kids. <laughs> no comment. Anyway, all in favor? None opposed. All right. Public comments. Any public comments? Thank you all, sir. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, all right, trustee comments. We'll start on the right with Paul. Uh, I just wanted to thank Dave for taking the time last week to uh, take me around and my colleagues and tour the pump station facilities that we uh, had a chance to see. It was very helpful for me to, to, to do that and to get some history and some, some background and perspective on on those stations. So, Dave, thank you very much for taking the time to do that. You're welcome. Hey, for, for the other trustees, I want to... Uh, convey one comment uh, one of his colleagues made to me as, as we were touring a pump state one of the pump stations and she said how do you keep your pump station so clean I tell my guys to clean them <laughs> 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 and they do, and, they do. <laughs> and she goes oh okay <laughs> so uh, th they do a very good job maintaining the uh, collection system um, and keeping things clean and tidy and neat I want to give them credit for that. Cool. Any more comments, Paul? No, thank you. All right, Jason. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to Dave, Wendy, the staff, uh, obviously for all that they do and for also uh, putting together uh, the 2020 budget that we reviewed earlier this evening. Thanks for all the hard work on that. Um, we had a chance <laughs> to uh, have dinner with uh, the employees at our employee appreciation dinner last week, which was great. Great to see uh, many of the folks come out. That's an event I always look forward to, and time time that I like to spend, and it's showing my appreciation to the employees and, and all that they do. 
Uh, and I especially want to thank Wendy tonight for the snacks, your lifesaver. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Judith. What's that? Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving next Thursday. Safe travels. Have a wonderful time with family and friends and um, enjoy that turkey. I know I will. Okay. Ruth? Um, I thank everybody here for giving me the opportunity to serve. Uh, I also thank the town of Scarborough for allowing me to fulfill this role. I really am very excited and it's been a great learning experience and I thank Dave for taking extra time and now that I know you ask so many questions, I don't know that I'll be sitting next to you again. But I do appreciate it. It's a lot of pressure. But I do thank everyone for this opportunity, and thank you to my son for being so patient. Wonderful. Welcome to the board. We appreciate you being here. Uh, ben. Yeah, I want to thank Dave for putting together the budget next <coughs> year and uh, also doing the uh, workshop. I mean, not the workshop, but the public, public hearing today. And a lot goes into that behind the scenes. Try not to make so many comments next month. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready uh, next month. And I welcome uh, you on the board, and I welcome Paul and, and uh, Joe back as well. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Um, well, uh, first and foremost, uh, thanks to the public for showing up. Appreciate the comments. Uh, you are the reason we're here. Um, thank you, Ruth, for joining the board. We appreciate that. Thanks to Wendy and Dave for all their hard work for this entire year, especially setting up the public hearing and preparing the budget for next year. Appreciate it. Uh, I also had a great time at the Employee Appreciation Dinner. Kudos to the crew for another wonderful year. Um, and I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. The only thing else is I ask for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion, we adjourn. Second. All in favor. <laughs> oh, that was fast. <laughs>